Hi, welcome to Control and Compound. I'm your host, Darren Mitchell, and joining me today is Christina Wyatt, Wealth Coach at Control and Compound Financial. Christina, how are you doing? Hey, Darren, I am doing excellent. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. We've got a great podcast today. We're going to talk about uh, inflation. Probably the number one topic people are asking is about worried about inflation. What do I do with inflation? So if you're worried about inflation, we're going to teach you how to beat it. Okay, or we're going to tell you some ideas on how to beat it. So before we dig into um, a definition and some of the things we're going to talk about, why is this topic so, so, so in the press, everyone talking about it? What's going on with inflation around the world and specifically in Canada, Christina? Well, inflation rates are rising. We're seeing the news headlines everywhere. Uh, June, in the month of June, we were up to 8.1% inflation rate in Canada. Our neighbors in the U.S., 9.1% inflation rate. Uh, so we're seeing it. We're feeling it. or seeing it in the headlines. You know, uh, gas, one of, the big, one of the big ones that has been impacted. It's up 6.2% in the last month. So 55% um, over all increase on the price of gas in the last year. So we're definitely seeing it and people are definitely feeling it. Cool. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, you can't, you can't talk to anyone without someone mentioning the price of gas, the price of goods and services going up. So, so I want to step back and I want to talk about the in inflation. What is the definition of inflation? What's driving inflation? Um, and then we're going to get into some, some, some solutions. But if you look at the definition of, of, of inflation, and then we kind of break this down, inflation is a continuing rise in the general price level, okay? Continuing rise in price level just means prices went up, usually after an increase in the volume of money and credit relative to available goods and services. So increase in the volume of money, government printing more money, and credit available, low interest rates, credit was available, people were borrowing money left and right. So you've got government printing more money. You've got people borrowing money where the banks just kind of create money out of thin air and loan, loan, loan people money. So now you get this excess money chasing the same, same goods and services. So that's kind of why inflation happens. There's kind of four, four kind of key pieces, and then I'll give you a, a, an example. Number one, cheap money. We talked about that. Low interest rates uh, uh, help drive inflation. They're, they're incre obviously increasing interest rates now considerably. Government's been printing money like crazy. If you have twice as much money chasing the same amount of goods and services, its prices are going to go up. Interruption of supply chain. That's limited the amount of goods and services we, we, we have available to us. And then the fourth one, you mentioned fuel, fossil fuels, the increase in the, in the, in the price of fossil fuels. Now, there's all kinds of reasons why fossil fuels went up, and we can talk about that another day. But bottom line, fossil fuels are up, our energy costs are up significantly, and we use energy for everything. We heat, heat our homes, cool our homes, drive our cars, all the goods and services, everything in your grocery store, gas impacts or fuel or energy impacts those. <clears throat> so if we use just kind of a simple example and we break it down to a uh, to an eight-year-old kid level, and that's really what we all are at heart, eight-year-old eight kids. You've got an eight-year-old kid in a candy store, and, and he has this, this treat he just wants like crazy. It's $5, and he's never spent that much money. In fact, he only has $5 to his name. He saved his entire life, and he's come up with 5 bucks, and he's like, man, I want that treat. It looks so good, but I don't know if I can really, you know, my whole life savings, that's, you know, even as an eight-year-old, that sounds crazy. But he's in there one day, and Uncle Justin happened to be in the store, his uncle. And Uncle Justin says, hey, kid, how you doing? They're chatting. Well, the next thing you know, Uncle Justin just gives him $100. Ah, that's for you. So now you got this kid who had $5 before, now is $105. He thinks he's rich. He's loaded. Do you think he's going to buy that $5 treat now? Yeah, he might even buy one or two or three of them. So his money supply increased. Government printed more money, or Uncle Justin in this example, gave him more money, his money supply increased. And that's, again, really what we all are as eight-year-olds. So now we picture 10 kids in that store. 10 kids are in that store. There's three candies. They're $5 each. They all have $5. Yeah, they might sell them. But if Uncle Justin gave each one of those kids $100, I promise you those three candies would be sold. So that's 
we got more people getting money. Now, what about fuel? Well, what if that, that, that ship that, that delivers the candy from China over to North America to put in the store, well, well what happens if the fuel for that ship goes up 50, 100%? They're going to pass that on on the price of the candy. The price goes up because of the increase in fuel. And then the final thing, well, that ship coming from China, what if there's a supply chain issue? What does that mean? The ship can't come over. The ship gets delayed. It's outside a port for a couple months. So maybe now the candy store only has one candy on the shelf for that $5 treat, that desired candy. Now you've got 10 people with bags of money relative to where they were chasing not just the same goods and services, but reduced goods and services. There's only one on the shelf instead of three because of the supply chain issues. Now that price of that candy is going to go up even higher because someone's willing to pay. So, you know, at the end of the day, Christina, we're all eight-year-olds. What do you think? Pretty much, pretty much. It's a really good way to explain it, though, exactly what's happening out there at, you know, that eight-year-old. All of us are eight-year-olds out there, and we're experiencing it. We're not experiencing it with candy, but we're experiencing it with, you know, everyday things that we're seeing. Uh, Now, I had said the inflation rate for this year is 8.1% year-to-date, but you know, historically that we're not going to see that type of inflation every single year. But I do want to give a real life example on what inflation can do, what inflation does to your money. So you can see it, you know, we we understand with the candy, but let's put it to a dollar. Um, So historically, inflation has gone up between, you know, 1915 until 2022, about three, 3.12%. So we're usually going to go around four. So if we took a 4% inflation rate, and we took $100 and we had, okay, so let's add 4% on $100. So $100 earning 4% every year, you're going to have $267 in that 25 year time. So to have $100 in 20, 25 years time, you're going to need $267 because of inflation, right? Okay. I want to stop you there. So, so I just want to be clear. So you're saying if I have $100 now... $100 of purchasing power, okay? Yep. And it goes up a, a, and inflation's at 4% for the next 25 years. Then yep. I would need how much money to buy the same $100 worth of goods in today's dollars? $267. Okay. So $267 will buy me the same in 25 years will buy me the same as $100 buys me today. Exactly. So you're looking at a tank of gas. Hundred dollar tank of gas is going to be two hundred and sixty seven if we, with inflation rates at four percent, right? Real world things. That's what yep. we're looking at. So it's it's real. That's what will you know. That's what will end up happening. And if we look at it in the opposite sense, so what happens if we do not keep up with inflation? What happens to our hundred dollars if in twenty five years we didn't earn that four percent that we needed to get to two hundred and sixty seven dollars? What happens then? Well, our hundred dollars is now only worth thirty-eight dollars. So we're not even getting a quarter of a tank of gas at this point, right? So it's yeah, inflation is very impactful on that dollar. So so if I took that hundred dollars and I said uh, I don't trust the banks, I don't trust anyone to invest my money, I'm gonna put it under my mattress, and I left that hundred dollars under my mattress instead of filling up my filling up my gas tank for a hundred bucks. And I waited 25 years and went up 4%. Now I could only buy the equivalent of $38 of gas in today's. So putting putting your money under the mattress or burying it in the gardens, not going to, you know, it's really eroding your wealth. You think you're not losing, but you're actually losing big time because of inflation. Yeah, they call the inflation like the hidden, hidden tax, right? You don't... It, it, You can easily neglect it, but it's going to creep up on you and it's going to get you down the road. So, and that's exactly, those are real numbers, right? hundred dollars down to 38. So it it happens um, and it'll sneak up on you if you're not prepared and you don't think about inflation and work it into your planning, right? Okay. So how we've got this, this massive inflation going on, how, how are all the different investments uh, that people or places people park their money, how are they reacting to this? 
Well, we want to talk about how the investments are impacting, but I want to start with how they're impacting you. So we're talking about how it's impacting everyday Canadians. That's what we're seeing in the news headlines, how it's impacting all of us as a whole. But how is it impacting individuals? How is it impacting your home and your household? And I think the first one that we need to talk about is, you know, is your income, is what you're making keeping up with this inflation? That's the first way it's going to impact you, right? If your income's not keeping up with it, you're going to get impacted. Are people out there thinking about this right now? Yeah. Are you, is it, are most people getting a 8.1% or 9.1% raise? Probably not. Um, you know, this again, hopefully it doesn't stick around for a long time, but yeah, if you're, if, if it costs you eight or 9% more to buy something and you're only making 2% more, then you're not, you're not keeping pace. Yeah. And that's, I think that's where people, you know, that's one place to start protecting against inflation is making sure that you are continuously increasing your income, um, to keep up with pace of inflation. And how do we do that? This is one of the things we talk about all of the time, Darren, what's the biggest thing that the wealthy invest in? Invest in that golden goose, your most valuable asset, your number one treasure, you. You are, you are the biggest, you're the greatest investment you're ever going to make because of the income you can produce. Exactly. So you can take control of this inflation situation by investing in yourself, you know, taking those courses, uh, going out and getting a business coach, investing in yourself to be a better employee, be a better business owner, whatever it is that you're working on, you put that money into yourself. That's going to mean huge returns for you throughout your lifetime. And those huge returns were, will certainly keep up with that inflation, which is what you need to be doing. So investing in you has got to be, you know, step number one for keeping, keeping pace, um, and, you know, not having to be worried about inflation. Number one. Now there is a second place that we worry about inflation impacting and we'll get, we'll get to that Darren. So it's that second place that as individuals, we need to be thinking about when we're talking about inflation. Oh, I thought I was just going to invest in myself and be done. There's more I got to do. Well, you need capital to invest in yourself. So where are we getting that capital? Uh, yeah. So is your capital keeping pace with inflation? Right. I, I think that's that's a missed one. Right? The wages are easy. Right on inflation's 5%, I should get a 5% raise. Okay. But what about your capital? What about the money you have saved, stored, invested? What about your capital? Is that keeping pace with inflation? And how how uh, how are those places where people park their capital doing year to date, Christina? Well, you know, we talked about the cash, right? Keeping it in cash is going to get you nowhere in 25 years. You're going to go backwards. So we definitely don't want to keep it in cash. Another place that we're seeing people um, park their, you know, park their savings. So you hear about people using high interest savings accounts. So interest rates are going up. Yes. But are they keeping up with the inflation? Not so much. So, you know, you can get a high interest savings account now. I think the highest I've seen out there is around 1.5 um, at this point in time. But one point five is not going to give you that four. So you're still losing, right? You're not going to be able to keep that hundred dollars safe, uh, in a high interest savings account. So not, not so hot using the high interest savings account. We do have other things, you know, GICs, fixed income, uh, we haven't seen them doing so great. Interest rates are up, but again, even if you get to the four, you're really just keeping pace. You're not earning a return at that point. So you got to analyze these, you know, these investments, these vehicles that we're using to make sure that they're keeping up with inflation. I wouldn't say those two are, are doing great. They're not going to, you know, knock it out of the water for you better than cash but not, you know, keeping up. And if they are, if they, if you can get four, you're just keeping up, right? And not in today's environment, but overall long-term. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, some of the other places people park cash, certainly stock market, we've all seen stock market down considerably uh, in both, both U.S. and Canadian markets uh, year, year to date. So stock market's down. Uh, what else, uh, what other vehicles are we looking at where people are parking their money? Yeah, so we've got the stock market we talked about. Um, 
where you want to be if you're investing in those equities and right. So there is it, you know, there are some companies that are doing better with inflation because they can, you look at the oil and the gas industry, those types of things, they are doing better. So there's a chance that you could go up. Um, the only thing with investing in the stock market equities and that is you're not in control of it, right? So you're, you're putting your, you know, you're putting somebody else in control of making sure you keep up with inflation. And we're always preaching, you know, keep, keep control of your money, right? That's what you want to be doing. So when we're talking inflation protection, equity is a stock market. It is a good investment long-term, um, but not going to necessarily protect you from inflation. Uh, another one that we're seeing out there, Bitcoin. Darren, what's your take on Bitcoin and how it's doing with the inflation side of things? Yeah. I mean, you know, be honest, I'm surprised Bitcoin's down like 50% year to date. And, um, you know, I'm not a Bitcoin expert, but I but I follow it. I read about it constantly. I've read books about it. And I have, you know, we have a ton of clients that are invested in it. Um, you know, I was looking, I still believe Bitcoin's a store of value. Uh, Long term, it'll be, you can look at a store of value. Uh, you know, we talked about, you know, one of the things that's happening right now is the governments are printing money, just literally printing money to increase that money supply. Well, we can't, they can't do that with Bitcoin. There's a fixed amount. So that fixed finite amount, the whole idea was it's going to be a store of value because it's a limited supply, kind of like gold. And then, you know, great, that should go up. In, in the economic downturns, you would think Bitcoin would go up. But unfortunately, it's kind of following the stock market or even it, 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 it's following times two, three, four, the, the stock market. So, I, you know, I'm still a big believer in Bitcoin long term. You know, is it a great buying opportunity? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, again, I'm not an expert. I'm not giving you financial advice on Bitcoin here. Um, but as, you know, going back to, you know, my economics background, it's the expectation was I thought Bitcoin would have went up. So it didn't. But, you know, I still think it's a great long term store of value. And then, you know the other the other one we we haven't touched on that 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 I'm sure is on your list is real estate, and you know real estate historically we've got thousands of you know Bitcoin we have this much you know a few years of uh, of 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 uh, data, real estate we've got thousands of years of data and and real estate has been an incredible hedge against inflation, long term okay but not short term not short term right we're seeing some fluctuations across the country some markets are down you know fair amount ten twenty percent. Uh, some other markets are kind of stable, but long term, rents are going to go up, property values are going to go up. We've got more people, you know. Long term, I have zero concerns about real estate. It's all about having being in the right property now that you can survive this downturn. Uh, make sure you have access to money. Make sure the rents are going up. Make sure you know you're not going to get any of these loans called or the changes in the HELOC and all that stuff. So you know, comfortable real estate long term. But yeah, all of those places we talked about are seeing massive volatility uh, in 2022. Yeah, we're seeing the we're seeing the volatility. Um, it's coming from you know in inflation, interest rates going up, trying to combat that inflation um, to some degree. But we've got that volatility, right? So um, that's where we're seeing the impacts of inflation on those types of investments. Uh, the one I want to talk about is the one that you know I think really does knock out inflation. Like we can combat inflation with it for real. For real, we can combat inflation with it, and that's the whole life policies that we use for the infinite banking strategy right so the whole life policies we've got uh we've talked about it a lot you know the dividend announcement 6.1 we're not seeing the volatility there um we're seeing that you know smooth uh you know just keeping pace doing what it needs to do and it does keep pace with inflation from the storing like storing your wealth side of things right if you're going to store your wealth you want to make sure that it's keeping up with inflation and these policies certainly are year over year keeping up with inflation for us so i think that they're doing pretty good in this whole inflation thing i'm having good client meetings right now i'm not having those terrible <laughs> i'm not having very bad ones i'm having good meetings telling them that things are exactly as we planned for which is in a bad <laughs> it's in a bad place to be well, and I think I want to spend a couple of minute, a minute on that, Christina, because it like how important that is. Like, you know, in, in the infinite banking world, we've been talking for years about the importance of building a strong financial plan, building a rock solid bulletproof, you know, plan that's going to keep pace with inflation, place to store your wealth. Um, and now we're seeing this, this downturn and all these different things. 
you know, stock market's down, real estate's down, Bitcoin's down, interest rates are, the GICs aren't great. And what's going on with infinite banking? Well, the four companies we use this year, two of them had no change in dividends and two of them actually increased their dividend. So, you know, they're all six, 6.1% in that kind of ballpark range when everything else is just being crazy volatile participating whole life dividend paying whole life or infinite banking policies are doing the exact same thing they have for 150 years going up higher than inflation overall historically every single year for 150 years without it without ever having a down year like people are having this year in all those other markets we talked about so you know it works phenomenal in good times infinite banking and it works phenomenal in bad times and that's why it's got to be the base of your financial plan. Cash is, isn't doing much here with inflation and all those other things we talked about are dropping. So, you know, it's kind of like uh, the, the death benefit portion that we don't focus on a lot. But in infinite banking, if you die day one, well, it's a phenomenal investment return. You're dead, which kind of is, you know, unfortunate. But you pay one month or one year's premium and you get the entire death benefit. But if you live a long time, it's phenomenal because you have that years and years of compound uninterrupted growth on the cash value and the death benefits. So you get these massive values. So if you live, if you live short, medium, or long term, it works phenomenally well. Well, it's the same good times or bad. This is what you need. When we talk about building an opportunity slash emergency fund as the base of your financial plan, putting it in a place that's rock solid and bulletproof, well, this is what we meant by rock solid and bulletproof. All the years we've been talking about this, now we're seeing it. Everything else is going down. This is actually going up. Exactly. No, for sure. I know when I'm having conversations, and we talk about it a lot, it, when you're doing your planning, you've got to plan for things like inflation, right? It's not just looking for the highest um, rate of return. You want to plan for inflation. You want to plan for taxes. You want to plan for longevity, just like you said. Like Retirement's got a lot of different things that you need to plan for, and sometimes you're not looking at all the aspects. Inflation's one of them, and we're living it, right? We're seeing it. We need to plan for inflation as individuals that want to retire retire at some point in time, it needs to be talked about when you're doing those, you know, those review meetings, and you're sitting down to do the full planning, the holistic planning aspect of it. So I do. Yeah, so love that. These are what the investments are doing. Um, this is how they're working with inflation, what we're seeing right now. Um, and we want to talk about how do like, what do I do with my money? How do I protect it from inflation? But there was one other piece infl of inflation that we wanted to chat about um, first, Darren, and that's that lifestyle inflation. So the lifestyle inflation, we talked about the inflation in the headlines. Um, but there's a little something called lifestyle inflation as well that we wanted to touch on. Yeah, um, your your inflation is not the number in the press. Okay, so that number in the press is a basket of goods, and they sometimes take out take take out some things, but it's a basket of goods. Well, really, what's your lifetime? What what's your basket of goods? If your basket of goods isn't doesn't match exactly the CPI, well, great, your inflation isn't the same as CPI. But you mentioned lifestyles, so you know. When uh, when I first got married, uh, you know, I had a, uh, I think, a 12-year-old car, uh, and my wife had a 12- or 13-year-old car that I think I was able to sell for $300 at some point. But my point is, whether that $300 car is worth $400, $500, or $600 today doesn't really affect my life because I'm not driving $300 cars anymore. You know, I used to play 25 cent golf balls when I was in my early 20s and I was poor. Well, now I just have nicer quality stuff. So the inflation rate of the things I used to, get, used to buy, $300 cars and 25 or 50 cent golf balls, well, the, the, if they went up 10%, it doesn't affect my life at all because my lifestyle inflation is as you get older and you start making more money, people want nicer homes, nicer cars, nicer things. And then when prices go up, they don't go back to the things they had 20 years ago. No, no, I've become a, used to playing a Pro-V golf ball, or I've, I'm used to living in this nice house, or I'm used to driving uh, a vehicle that's, you know, a couple of years, only a couple of years old or whatever. So that lifestyle. And then the other one people don't talk about is planned obsolescence. Like, forget about the price of things. Manufacturers design things to break down now. It's called planned obsolescence. We all have, you know, stories about our parents 
washer and dryer lasting 30 years. Like I grew up in my family, mom and dad's house, and we've only, we only had one, one washer and dryer ever. It was like 30 years it lasted. Now they actually design them to, to, to be replaced in five, six, seven years, or I think, Christina, you got some one-year examples of things just designed to break down. So great. The price of those things may have come down a little bit because actually some of those appliances are cheaper than they were. But if you need to, over a 28-year period, buy four, four appliances instead of one like the old days, well, the CPI doesn't account for the way things are designed to, to fail now. Um, so, you know, your lifestyle, planned obsolescence, there's a lot more going into your inflation number than the overall inflation number. And it's just, uh, just something to be aware of. Yeah, something that people need to be thinking about. You're watching, you know, you're watching the headlines and you're getting worried about it, but you really need to look at your specific, what what things look like for you. And that's definitely one of the things that uh, gets forgotten about. So I want to get to the big question, you know, the question that we said we were going to touch on, you know, how, where do I put my money? What am I putting this, you know, you got me all scared of this inflation. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Give me the advice on what I'm supposed to do to be able to uh, keep up with it and protect myself against inflation. Yeah. So, so, so let's talk, you know, I'll talk big picture, then we can dig into some more details. I mean, bottom line, your money needs to reside somewhere. You need to store your wealth somewhere, right? It doesn't matter if you have a hundred dollars or a million dollars, you need to store it somewhere. Okay, so we can talk about investing, okay, long term. Yes, I believe real estate, hopefully Bitcoin too. Yes, I believe the stock market will come back long term. But let's talk about savings. And that's really the short midterm zero to five years kind of stuff. Well, let, let, let's talk about it. You know, you want to go in Bitcoin, it's down 50%, the market, stock market that's down, you know, you, you want to save your money in a 0% bank account, not, not keep pace with inflation. Well, then we have this beautiful infinite banking policy that clients have and, and people can buy. And let's see, we're, we're, our, ca- our cash value is com- growing anywhere three and a half to 5% long term. We've got a death benefit. It allows us to multiply money. And like, think about that. Just common sense, back to the candy store analogy. If those 10 kids in the store were each given an extra $100, do you think they'd be able to sell more candy in that store? It's money supply common sense. Well, it's the same when we talk about this money multiplying with infinite banking. If I have my money sitting in a bank account doing nothing versus if I have my money or in the stock market losing, or if I have my money in an infinite banking policy, my cash value is growing. I'm going to multiply that dollar, provide a death benefit. I'm going to multiply that dollar and I'm going to borrow 90% against the value. And I'm going to go by whatever else I think is going to help me with inflation. So let's say your personal idea is I'm going to use real estate to battle inflation. I'm going to use Bitcoin. I'm going to buy the stock market low. I'm going to buy more cattle. I'm going to put money back into my business. I'm going to put money back into myself, invest in yourself. Well, for all of those things, if you could multiply dollars so you have 2 or $3 working for you inside the policy, outside the policy, taking that course to give you the new designation that's going to get you promoted or whatever, an investment in yourself or a real estate investing course or a coach. If your money's in more than one place at the same time, it's just common sense that that's going to help you battle inflation and have more wealth. Um, So if we can multiply money, incredible. And then, you know, again, we can dig into all these different things, but guaranteed creditor protection, you can get sued or bankrupt, they can't touch this money. Great. People are going to get sued and go bankrupt under, 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 under these times. So we've got that death benefit, tax-free transfer. It doesn't count as a, as a, as a loan when you're going to get a, a, a mortgage or a property. So there's just like literally 10, 20, 30 things we could talk about how impactful multiplying your money and all the benefits of infinite banking, how it literally is the perfect place to park your money for all times, but we're seeing it now. Wow. It was ever the perfect place today. Yeah, for sure. Darren, like I've got, uh, you know, people that ask me consistently, it's a hot topic. Like I said, consistently, how do I protect it? How do I protect against inflation, Christina? Like what about inflation? What are we doing there? And what I say is, you know, 
got your back. The policy's got your back. It's going to do what it has to do for inflation. It's going to be keeping up, like you said, between three and a half and 5% inside the policy. It's got you for inflation. It is your job now though, is what I say, and this is what you're good at, you know, as a real estate investor, business owner, whatever, you know, you're investing Bitcoin, whatever you do best, you go do you, you take that money, you go make the investment on the outside and everything above it is gravy, right? Inflation is taken care of. And that's what you mean by multiplying your dollar, right? You have it working, your inflation's taken care of on the inside. Everything that you're making on the outside is kicking inflation's butt, right? Cause we've got it handled on the inside. We're working on the outside to make our return. So that is you know, in my mind, it's what I do. It's what you do, right? Like this is exactly what we're doing to fight against inflation. We are sharing our secrets. This is our secret. This is what we do. We put our money in these policies. So inflation is handled and we can go out and do what we do, invest in our business, invest in our real estate and make those returns um, without having to worry about it. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it goes, it, it's similar to if someone has an idea how they can personally fight inflation, and it's going to be different for everybody, again, invest in yourself, business, whatever, maybe some ideas we haven't talked about. But if you think of it, so your options are, number one, I can go just sit in cash and lose money because of inflation, or go in something that's volatile and then, you know, stock market drops 30% and I'm like, oh, I better wait for it to come back and not be able to take advantage of any opportunities. Or you leave in your bank account because you want liquid liquidity use and control of it. Okay. Or you go, well, I got this thing over here that I think will earn me a 10% return. Um, that would be better than cash. Okay. But what about the third option is, what if I put it in the infinite banking policy or had an infinite banking policy first, and let's say I was earning 5% on the cash there, and then I leveraged that, and I also did the 10% deal, whatever your deal was to battle inflation. Does it make sense, Christina, if I had my money doing the 5%, and doing the 10% at the same time, that that would be better than just doing the 10%. Like, Yeah, I would say 15% is better than 10. Every day I'll in, take 15 over 10. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, there's 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 loans against the policy and interest rates that are tax deductible and all this stuff. But I mean, just big picture, if you could multiply money, do you think that would be helpful in all times? During inflation, during no inflation, we're literally multiplying money just like the banks do. So if you can have a dollar in your policy, leverage it out, use that dollar somewhere else, also have a death benefit, that's doing. So you ask, you know, people people ask me all the time, like, what are you doing? What are you doing for inflation? Like what and I'm like, I am building up my opportunity fund. And that's, you know, really building that opportunity slash emergency fund, right? Because let's face it, there's going to be emergencies going on here with all this inflation too. People are going to need money. And the infinite banking policy we call our opportunity slash emergency fund. And then we become money multipliers. And if you are a money multiplier, you're going to be able to do multiple investments when most people are doing zero or one investment. You can do two or three or four and then just keep recycling it through. Um, you know, it, there's there's... I can't imagine a, I can't imagine a better place to save money. And we've looked far and wide, and I've talked to thousands of people, and and I've studied this for years. If there was a better place to save or store your wealth, we talk about it. But through good times and bad, we've never seen a a better place to save and store your wealth than a properly structured, infinite banking type policy, high cash value policy set up by someone that knows what they're doing. Exactly. Exactly. That a lot, Christina. Did I did did I get I get in one of my rambles? But you know that that's it. Multiply money, strong, stable base of your financial plan. We said in good times and bad, you need access to money. Well, guess what? You have access to money uh, with an infinite banking policy, and it does keep pace with inflation, and it doesn't drop in volatile times. It's not correlated to the market. It's not correlated to the real estate market. It's not correlated to the Bitcoin market. So all these things that are dropping, infinite banking policies or high, high cash value policies are going up. What a great place to be. Exactly. That's exactly how we uh, battle inflation. Nailed it. Uh, okay, Christina, anything else uh, on, on inflation? So, you know, we identified the problem and I think, you know, the solution for, you know, I, you, you mentioned the client, me client meetings. Yeah, our annual re review meetings have been pretty good in the last few months. They're always really good because it's always good news. It's like, well, you get a little bit more cash than we thought. And they're like, what? 
well, yeah, things are going a little bit better, you know, than even we projected. And it's like, huh, not many of their other accounts are doing the same thing. So um, I encourage everyone to learn more about infinite banking. Reach out to us if you want. Christina, anything else we want to wrap up with before we, uh, we, we finish this episode? No, I think that about sums it up for today. We've, we've covered the inflation hot topic, so I'm happy that we've, we've done it. Okay, you want to beat inflation, start with an infinite banking policy. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you always know when new content is coming out. For more helpful tips and tricks, visit our Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok pages at Control and Compound. If you want to reach out to us directly or work with us, visit our website at controlandcompound.com. The links are in the show notes below. See you next episode.